Welcome to the second episode of A Beautiful Disaster. Now this one I'm talking about Speed Racer. The Speed Racer was Wachowski's follow up to the Matrix trilogy. It was hated. It was, there was someone genuinely hateful about the reviews of this film. It was really, they just, still just didn't want anything to do with this film. I mean some of it was that some people felt burnt by the Matrix sequels. There was uh, some bad will towards Wachowski's at this point. They weren't on any press, there was no way to directly get at them to say what did you do with The Matrix? So there was this new film came out and it came out and it was completely different from what they expected and it was a flawed film so I get clobbered and it was completely undeserved how it got clobbered I mean it's, it's a very different type of film but it is beautiful and it was it was not handled properly <laughs> the press, the press have I have something to answer for for how this one was treated because it was it, was, it should never have been a disaster, a disaster that it was for starters. I mean the film does have flaws, the film is 20 minutes too long there's some sequences in the middle that you don't really need that could have been cut out but uh, lots of little details that you don't need but so much of it is ambitious and has such newness to it that even if you don't let the film, you could have at least acknowledged how new it was but instead this was treated like an affront to uh, the media basically like how dare you make a film so obviously based on fakery how dare you make, how dare you actually point out how fun the cars look because after all it's like toy cars it's some certain shots just to have a lot of fun of what the film is because the film is about car racing cars it's for kids it's directed at your inner child as well. It's knowingly absurd, knowingly naive. And that's what it was hated for. It was just hated for that. Plus it was like, there was a view that the, to a CGI at that point was like too much because it had to be real. Everything had to be real. Everything had to be like Born Identity or a new Batman film where everything was real and that's kind of boring. <laughs> I just, I'm, I'm not a big fan of making everything real because I think it gets very literal very quickly and this film was like sod all that this is going to be beautiful and weird and have lots of fun cuts and, they, and the images are going to go with other images and we're going to celebrate the artifice of movies because it's all, it's all about celebration of movies I mean it feels like what Coppola was doing in, like, in some of the 80s films when he was after he'd done the realistic films he did stuff like One from the Heart and even in Dracula, even though the Blues were two other very flawed films, they were celebrating artifice. This film is in that feeling of like, let's celebrate all this stuff. I mean, there's other films who also celebrate it. I mean, um, like Pearl Pressburg in the 40s celebrated the artifice of film, but also tied it towards like stories that you could, then, you could actually feel for. So, I mean, it's come through our history there's always these films that point out that what you're watching isn't real and for a lot of viewers and critics you shouldn't do that they want to forget that it's not real and if you actually do stuff like what the chess was doing here or Ang Lee did in the Hulk or you know what De Palma does sometimes which is point out you're watching a fiction you've just been manipulated but enjoy it <laughs> They don't like that. It's like uh, you're going to point out that the film's affection. You should be serious about it, not have fun with it. And this film has fun with the artifice. It's a once upon a time movie. Like once upon a time, there was a world that had these uh, extreme car races, and extreme car races were very colourful and beautiful, and they were run by crooks. And it's about a kid who fights against that. And the funny thing is, if you see it in the context of other Wachowski movies, a lot of things that they're obsessed by in The Matrix or in later films like Cloud Atlas is here as well. They have an interest in individuality versus family. Like, like the myth of the individual is the, the one that will change everything. They, they tend to highlight that in quite a few of their films. And then they start to undercut it and show that everybody needs support. So it's not just in 
the individual can have great gifts and they can be some someone who has great potential but they need what other people have done, the stakes of other people to propel them forward. So in this one, you have two, you have the typical narrative, the ghost behind what happened to Speed's brother Rex is a very important thing. So basically the basic story is uh, Speed Racer's trying to uh, get a career in car racing because he's obviously has a lot of talent. He's offered money to join the big companies, he says no, they decide to destroy him. At that point, Racer X and the committee are trying to prove these guys are crooks, get him and get Speed involved to try and find out what's going on behind the scenes and there's all these car races and espionage stuff that goes on and eventually Speed wins, That's you know he's going to win. In the background you've got the idea of the tragedy of his brother Rex who fought off the same trajectory but he was destroyed by the industry and basically he fakes his death becomes Racer X and you actually see these are parallel you know, the parallel stories but the idea of the film is that Speed needs to take the mistakes made by his brother and build on from them and Rex has to, now Racer X has to basically see his mistakes and use them to build and help his brother so these, these parallel things, these happens in the Matrix as well, Happen Cloud Atlas's idea is the evolution of a person throughout the evolution of the society through music and through art um, so it's not about one person, it's about how the ideas evolve through time and the Matrix says, Matrix, Neo is the one but he needs the help of all these other people to help him fulfil his potential so, so you've got the idea of the, the individual who has a lot of talent but it's also they can't do it alone so that's something that flows through this, flows through other films I probably explain it in a very kind of convoluted fashion, but uh, that's the idea that floats through it. It's something that's really interesting with Chowski, they really are fascinated with this idea that you've got it's not just one or the other, it's both. It's one of the, one of the attractive things of their films is that they don't elevate the individual above society, it's both. It's always like you need someone to point the way, but you also need the others to kind of course correct and help on the way. So in this film, Speed Racer's family, who are not the geniuses he is, support him and uh, help him, and are uh, all do their bit to get him to the end and to get him to fulfil his potential. And that's a nice, sweet thing. It's very simple, though. And I think that was another thing that people weren't expecting someone so simple from Chowski's after the complication of the Matrix. They expected something. Not to expect this. This was like completely different from what they've done before, and I think that kind of put them off. Mixing that simplicity and the acting was very stylized towards very basic acting, very basic emotions, and it was melodramatic, which was sweet. It was really a, some sweet performances, but they, it just wasn't what was expected. So again, I seem to rub people the wrong way. So you'd all these that mixed with artificiality created this thing that. Only certain people seem to like, and a lot of people seem to reject instantly. And by the time the film came out, if you put it against Iron Man, or just after Iron Man, and then the critics were so horrible to it that it couldn't really open. It was just like, it was decimated by the critics, so you couldn't really open this film after they had done their job on it. So it's now a cult film, it's now sort of building its audience up, but it was damaged when it needed the support. And that was really shameful because I think it, it was a much more interesting film than it was given credit for. I mean, there are flaws. The flaws are the big business subplots. Some of them are too complicated for a kid's film. And some of them could have just been simplified a little. And you could have, you could have kept the fun. And you could have kept the intent, but you wouldn't have... There's lots of sequences you could you'd see you could lose a little bits of and it would have made the story simpler. There's a couple of moments where they go too far for the kids with Speed's little brother 
who with his pet monkey. He's okay in some bits, but they overdo it in certain points where it's like it's obviously someone not used to doing comedy, and they're just overdoing it, and they should be told like, get rid of this. This is in the in the way it's the same way with some of these sequences of the copy espionage are going a bit too long at times. But there's lots of films who, with those kind of flaws in them, they still do well. So I don't think it was a, you know, it wasn't something that broke the film, it was just a flaw in the film. I mean, every film has flaws, and this one is no different. But what it did right was so beautiful that it's a shame it never got the attention it deserved. I mean, it really deserved a lot of credit. Because some of the scenes, the first 20 minutes is wonderful because you're jumping from your phone speaking into a race, and you're flashing back and getting the story of his Rex, his brother, then getting the story of him meeting his girlfriend, then you're also seeing his obsession with racing, jumping back and forward through the points of him and his family. It's done wonderfully. In 20 minutes, and you get basically, I know it was worth the exposition at the way, but it's, everything's done so filmically. Again, even I was surprised that wasn't praised more when it was released because it was so well done and used cinema so well for what it's needed, what you can do use it for. And through the film, there's moments like that, like they're intercutting people and they're the Monte Cristo, how, how the race starts, is very explosive, but they're, they're intercutting lots of stories. It's one of those bits that could be cut out a little bit, but it's, it's so well done jumping between different kind of images, different kind of stories, from like the expansive like car races and atmosphere to these little spots of character that isn't really done in films very often. Usually it's very that you get very simple stories set out and you have to sit through dull, dull scenes to get to the point. This one tries to uh, avoid that kind of problem but it never got the respect for that kind of thing <laughs> and I guess it's a shame because it was a, it's such a wonderful little film it's not a little film, it's a massive film but compared to a lot you see now it was obviously doing a lot with uh, it's trying to do something that you feel that they're something new and it was released almost like a little film because it's almost like it was just dumped out there, it was like they almost knew that it was too weird for people so don't even try and because this time when it was released the critics just hated it it was just this kind of combination of not much publicity and revulsion by the critical community just as basically revenge for them not liking the Matrix sequels just damned this film and it's a real, it really is a shame because it, it really could have led a different kind of film onwards if it it actually hit. It could have done some more ambitious films rather than now we've seen all these bloody Matrix rip-offs still 10, 15 years later. We've still underworld films that are still doing Matrix rip-offs. You've still got like Abraham Lincoln Vampire Hunter was still doing Matrix shots and it's like that's so over, that's really annoying to watch now. And so when they try to do something new it was just, the Chelsea's were just damned. The next film called out was get better reviews and then Jupiter Ascending was a disaster. I'll get to that eventually. Uh, but this is definitely what you see. It's definitely worth a look because it's trying a lot new and does a lot of stuff wonderfully. So give it a shot. Okay, next up will be the 13th Warrior. Hope you enjoyed this. I hope you enjoy the next one.